Hello. Uh, today, we have the honor of interviewing Craig Shaw. Craig Shaw is a renowned celebrity designer of fine jewelry and Swiss watches. Sought out for unique, fashionable, and creative concepts, Craig Shelley's designs are highly crafted and bespoke. Clients are those who have an eye for luxury, style, and a compassionate heart. Their greatest passion is to use his creative talent and give back. They have dedicated a great portion of his success for the benefit of children and soldiers. Craig Shelley partners up with many prestigious organizations around the world. Some of his official time partners are Harvard and Yale for rivalry on ice, Cricket All-Stars, Beverly Hills Police, IIFA, C-Suite, and PGA Tournament, amongst many other organizations. Craig is also an active investor and board member of many companies on road to successful exits. Craig lives by his motto, purpose before profit. When asked what this means to him, Craig replies, think about others before yourself. Help children, soldiers, communities in need, help as little as you can or as much as you can. When purpose is before profit, the universe gives you many folds. Thank you for joining me, Craig. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Thank you, thank you, Kila, you're amazing. I really appreciate you having me here. So I know that you are a phenomenal entrepreneur. So for 2022, what are some of your objectives? Um, it's it's going to be a very, I mean, I just wrote an open letter to my community and I, I sent it out to all my partners and you can, you can see it on my blog. Um, I'll send you the link, but you know, it's been very weird two years, right? 2020 and 2021. Right. I mean, yes. Weird. Very weird. Very strange. At least you can say, you know, it's really, you know, craziness. You know, we were really grim reality came forward that, you know, nothing matters. You know, time is the most important commodity and that we should value every moment and cherish it. Um, so we've designed entire 2022 based on that. You know, we've decided that, you know, we're going to do only the best of the best. We're only going to do bring the right kind of people together we're only going to do the right things and we're going to give back together so we there is several events and 2022 is a beautiful year i'm i'm hoping that god blesses all of us and there are no more surprises that this pandemic comes to an end and and this world becomes a better place um you know you know with more compassionate more love and more giving back uh, all around um we have several events lined up in the first quarter itself um, as I showed you a little bit earlier, it's still in the stealth mode. We're going to release the new website pretty soon. Um, within a week or so, it should be out. Uh, we have a, a we have an event in Vegas on February twenty uh, February second uh, with at the Allegiant Stadium, um, where we're you know giving. It's called East West Shrine. It's a big event in partnership with Shriners, that charity we support. Um, so it's their hundred year hundred year anniversary, and we're releasing. Um, a limited edition watch for their uh, commemorating the 100 years and we're going to give back to them um, in a major way. Um, then we have a February 22nd, we have Miss Russia America. And I can actually show it to you, you know, maybe we can just show them, uh, you know, it will, it's easier when you show it to them. Is it okay if I just share this? Yeah, of course. Um, and it's still in the stealth, stealth mode, guys. So you will see in events, um, this is what I was talking about um, earlier when I, oh, we're already here. So this is the East West Shrine at the, at the Allegiant Stadium in Vegas. And then Miss Russia America on February 22nd in LA. We have a pre-Oscars event. And on March 27th, uh, we're one of my partners in LA. Then we have Secret Knock, March and September. We'll have our annual golf tournament in September. And we'll have the cruise, the celebrity cruise that we talked about. This is tentative, it's in July, very limited. 
will start in Rome and end in Monaco. So it's a very powerful year packed with a lot of stuff, as you can see, um, that we will be doing this year as a group, as Elevate Partners. So I know that you have so many people and it's not just, as, as I had mentioned before, it, you, you're not just local, you're worldwide. How did you become that successful? Um, you know, I just, I was, I was born in India and I moved to Japan. I mean, I moved to Hong Kong when I was 16 and then I moved to Tokyo when 17 and I was 19 when I came here. So I've been a world traveler all my life, I could say, you know, I started very young and I worked in all those places and ultimately US became home and LA, you know, is my, you know, you know, as they say, you know, there's a motherland, but there is, you know, this is my motherland. This is my work, it's my worship. And this is where I found success. So I always had this global exposure and I, I, had, I made contacts everywhere I went. And, uh, you know, so in Dubai, I have contacts in Australia, I have business partners. I mean, it's a global world today and it's not that difficult to become a global brand if you have the right product or right, you know, kind of people. Um, truthfully, anybody can do this. You know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I came here with nothing, uh, with nothing to my name. Um, you know, my parents were uh, separated and divorced when I was two years old. And I, my grandma took me in and my uncle raised us until I was 16. And I've worked from 16 to 22. I worked for somebody who really um, gave me a lot of training, but also lot, did a lot of abuse. You know, like I was, I worked seven days a week for six years with, you know, no pay. Um, oh, wow. and they owed me money. So at 22, I quit their job and, and I just never worked for anybody else after that. And I struggled, I built it, I fell, I got up. My wife helped me so much. You know, if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't make it together. My family came together. But this country and this people of this country, it's just an incredible place to be. And there was, everyone embraced me. I, I did my best, you know, I, yeah, I've been wrong. I've been, I have been wronged. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, all those are learnings and all those were hurdles that I was able to overcome because I had one, uh, one vision, which is I wanted to grow my brand and I wanted to do good in the community and in the world. So I just kept thriving, I kept pushing. And yeah, I mean, I, you know, all my contacts are still there and people from all over the world, they wanna be a part of our movement or our brand associated with us. So we, you know, we do everything we can to become global. When did you start the, the jewelry business? I was 22 when I could. Oh my it. gosh. Yeah, I, yeah, I was, uh, I started working for this company when I was 16, but I, like I said, I worked for them for six years and I did everything for them from cleaning floors to selling diamonds to whatever it, it took. I did, I did it. You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't gonna, there was no going back for me. I was not gonna go back home. I had decided that this, this is it. I'm gonna do whatever it is from this point on, I'm gonna do it. And I have big dreams. I had big dreams, you know, and at 22, I, you know, I quit my job because my boss at that time was, um, he put his leg over here. Like basically he didn't want to file for my green card. I was on a visa, on a work visa. And he did not want to um, uh, give me my salary. So I was oh. literally, you know, I was literally suffering and I was married, I got married to Shelly and my, she was my high school sweetheart, we got married and I had a baby. And at 23, I mean, I think Maria was born when I was 23, yeah. Um, so, I mean, literally we had a kid and, um, you know, we, nothing to my name. So I said, you know, I gotta quit this, you know, I gotta stop and start on my own. And thankfully because of that, you know, I did it. You know, I said, okay, I'm gonna quit my job. And we started the company and started building brick by brick from that point on. Oh, I see. So Craig, what is your why? What drives you? Uh, initially, my vision drove me, my, my passion for watches and jewelry and designing and creativity, that was driving me. But my why changed over the period of years. As I grew, as I learned more things, as I figured out that giving back is more important than receiving. And there is a pleasure that one gets in giving back, you know, like it's a, almost a selfish act. Like, you know, when you give back, you get satisfaction of giving back. And that actually is the biggest thing, you know, um, it may sound a little, you know, I don't know how it sounds to the audience, but I'm, I'm being honest with you. 
that giving back is a very selfish deed. You know, when you give back, you're actually not helping others, you're healing yourself, you're helping yourself heal. And I, I was given always, you know, I didn't have nothing to my name. I didn't have a father. I never had anyone watching over me. Um, my grandma helped me build me up. Um, and my uncle did. He's a great entrepreneur. He's a very successful man. He's worked very hard all his life. He's raised a village. So that was kind of my backdrop on um, what I want to do. But my why is now, you know, that I just want to do good in this world. I want to help as many people as I can, uh, touch as many souls as I can, and, and leave back a, a footprint, a legacy. Because, you know, we're all here for a very short time. Kila, you know, and we're here, we're all just coming. You know, I remember being a kid and, you know, it's been, I'm, I'm 49 now. It's, you know, it's been 20 some years, 28 years, 27 years I've been here. And um, I, I think it's, it's a matter of time. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen next. You know, there's so many things that are happening. COVID is just one thing. It's really screwed the world over. But, you know, there's so much going on out there that you don't want to have any of this, you know, don't, you know, just short time. The why is really make this world a better place. Help somebody out there who needs it. I mean, it's really unfair that, you know, we don't even think, you know, we go to the fridge and get a glass of water. We don't even know. We don't think. And here people are walking 10, 20 miles barefoot to get a bucket of water for their family. So it's a very big imbalance. This world is, world is a very, there's no balance here. Um, and I think if we can make a little bit of difference, if we can all make small adjustments in our lives, we can help someone on the other side. And you never know that person could become another Craig Shaw or they could become another Keela or whatever. You know, they would, they have the potential, they just don't have the opportunity. So my why is uh, truthfully, um, you know, and I remind myself every day and thank you for asking me this question because it kind of reinforces in me that I want to change this world the best I can, um, you know, and help others. That's why I want to do this. I know that you you help a lot of people. Are there specific organizations that you are helping? Um, you know, we have a form on the website, it, uh, or at least it used to be on the old website, the new one. I don't know if it's still there. I'm sure they'll put it up. It's called the charity support page. Basically, any charity, any nonprofit that comes in, they can, they just have to fill out the paperwork. It's, it takes less than two minutes. They just have to be a legit, you know, charity. We manufacture timepieces and jewelry that we will auction or give it to them for free. So if I make a thousand units, I'll make a hundred extra and I'll give them those units and they can retail and use the money for the charity. So it's not necessarily that there is, there's no restrictions. Anyone can come in, any nonprofit that has a purpose that can come in. We do have a small board that looks at it but you know for the most part the answer is you know uh, anyone and everyone's welcome if you have a charity please reach out we will definitely help you but the ones that i that are close to my heart are um there are there's one in particular in india it's called um akshaya patra basically it provides food it's a pot with unlimited food um the purpose is you know that you know the children of the poor families they don't you know, the parents want them to go to the fields and, you know, work in restaurants or bus tables or clean cars or God knows what they want to do because they want food on the table. You know, they make less than a dollar a day. So they don't even have proper um, shelter. So they, so they, um, they practically send the children out to work. And so there's this one guy who started this in 2000. So it's been 21 years that this person is working. And I'm so sorry, the dog is just gonna. I'm sorry, she disturbed the thing. But um, basically, you know, this person started a school saying that if you send your kids to my school, which is free, not only I'll give them food for free, but the entire family can come in for free. Oh and my gosh. So that turned into a huge movement uh, where um, they have fast forward 21 years later, it's one of the biggest uh, programs where they don't just give out food, they want the kids to get educated. So when the kids go through the 12 years of school, their entire family can eat for free in that school. Wow. And so that goes on, they have 29 kitchens in India and that's, it's a movement, you know, it's basically they feed 
a million eight hundred thousand children. Oh my gosh! Every single day, every single school what day. Is, how do you spell it? Akshaya Patra. I'll put it in the group chat, and you can you can send it to whoever you want. Okay. And it's it's the cost of feeding one child is less than a drink at the bar. Oh it's my gosh! 20, Twenty bucks. Put one child through one year for school and education, and feed the families. So they, you know, the parents can work, but they can come to the school. The siblings can come to the school, even though because the child is in the school, as long as the child is goes to the school. So what happens is, Kila, that when the girl child gets educated, she, she makes sure that her kids never go back to the street. And it is just most amazing story. It's just a great, it's really dear to me because um, obviously not just because I'm biased and I'm in India, but you know, I'm an Indian, uh, born in India, but I just think it's the greatest thing to give in someone an opportunity to, um, you know, give them an opportunity to uh, study and give a chance so that when they exit out of the school, at least they'll have enough money or get a job to put shelter over their head and right. get food on the table, right? So that's a you know, amongst others, you know, I have Shriners that we help uh, or we're, we're supporting majorly um, and some other, you know, charities you can see on my website, but those are the mm -hmm. ones that are close to my heart. And how about soldiers? You mentioned soldiers. Are they yeah. Navy or Marines or what type of soldiers are they? They are, um, if you were, if you saw the video of the uh, tournament, you know, we had the Marines come out, the Navy SEALs come out. Um, so we raise money for them. Uh, we also raise money for, um, so that charity is called You Matter Not Alone. So basically you're not alone in this, you, you matter. Um, and that's one of the charities, but there's another one, um, um, gosh, I'm blanking out, um, A Soldier's Journey Home. That's a great one too, you know, that they build uh, homes for soldiers that come out and they lost everything that- Oh know. yeah, yeah. So that's, um, that's a great uh, charity, but you know, I'm any, any, you know, veterans charity, I would love to support. I don't have any, anything I can do, I will do. If it's in my powers, I'll do it. Yeah. So when you came here, uh, did you come with anyone? No, I came by myself. Oh uh, my gosh. I was 19. I landed with, a, you know, just like I landed in Hong Kong. I was 16, 17 and my boss gave me a ticket and a, a, an address and gave me a couple hundred bucks and said, when you land, you give the money back to the office and <laughs> you use 20 bucks for your taxi. There were no cell phones back then. Nobody spoke English in Hong Kong at the time. U.S. was beautiful. I mean, I always wanted to come to the U.S. and I wanted to come and study here, but I never got an opportunity at the time. But so I told my boss, if you ever send me to the U.S., I will, uh, I will, um, I will work for you and I'm thankful for him. You know, I mean, as you know, whatever happened, happened. It does, I don't hold, you know, all learning experiences. If it wasn't for that six years, I wouldn't be groomed the way I am. Of course, I miss my, uh, my money. That would have been a lot more today, but you know, uh, that's one thing. But honestly, it's a great experience um, that I earned and I worked very hard to get it, you know. And then when I came to the US, I was like literally 19. And I was, I, I traveled the US, I worked hard every day. There was never, I never said no to anything. Whatever they said, I did it. Um, and that kind of worked in my favor too. You know, I, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm really surprised because you have such a uh, huge outreach. You know, so many people. I don't even know how many people you know. There's, you have such a following. Um, yeah, so. Thank you. It's not, nothing, nothing that I did out of normal, except for being, you know, just be authentic and be who you are, believe in your values and just put it out there. You know, thanks to social media, you can connect to thousands. I mean, I'm, I'm not that famous or popular, but I think what, what it is, whoever I'm connected with are genuine people. I, you know, I attract the like-minded, you know, you're, I, I work well with you because I, I really think you're a great genuine person. So I think, doing right for others just always works mm -hmm. so um you know i think that's what i would drive the message that um i mean no it's not important how many millions you know people but it's important how many you know and you've done right by you know that's that's what matters so i think yeah. so 
You know, Craig, there are a lot of people, especially young people who are lost. They're working long hours, they're not happy. And maybe they want to start a business this year. Uh, what kind of advice can you give to somebody like that? You know, I mean, it's very easy to get lost. Even, you know, everyone gets lost. I get lost sometime, you know, and then I have to replug in, refuel and find a mentor. I'd say the biggest advice I can give them is you, everyone needs a mentor. If you, no matter who you are, um, if you're the biggest, greatest person in this world, you still need to learn from someone. So, and that person doesn't have to be very rich or very ultimately successful. That person has to be maybe a person of values or, you know, who, who you know, well or you resonate with so if you know some you know it, it, it's very important to get a good mentor that will work with you that will understand if you have an idea don't just keep it you know like don't just keep it in your head you know execute it go out it's very there's so many resources out there and you can do this you in today's world you can do more than ever before because it's all global you can have teams all across the world and you can go on fivers and upworks and hire people anywhere and everywhere and at least get your idea realized. And then, you know, if it's you, if you're solving a problem, you will get success. The bigger the problem you solve, the bigger the success you're going to get. Obviously, you know that. But um, the biggest advice I can give somebody: don't don't feel lost. You know, if you're feeling lost, of course, gather an idea, do some meditation, and and if you believe in your purpose, if you believe that you're really solving a problem, find a mentor find somebody who will take, if you have to give somebody a piece of equity or sweat equity, give it to them, but take your business to the next level. You know, oh, another thing, very important, find a mastermind or a group where you can, you know, find like-minded people and share your ideas. And, you know, obviously, you know, get your NDAs and NCAs in place so that your idea doesn't go out or, you know, doesn't get lost in, in the, in the, you know, nobody copies it, but, you know, iron sharpens iron, you know, like that's basically getting a group where you can, you know, you find right kind of people that will make difference. Okay. Um, my last question is, what are, what are some of the um, books or what is, what are you reading or watching right now? Um, I'm not a great reader, um, and I'll be honest, I could not read a paragraph when I was in high school. I was dyslexic, I was ADHD, whatever you call it, I couldn't read properly. Um, that, that's why I was always thought good with um, uh, grades. I was very on very average or maybe below average student. Um, but, you know, I've learned that, you know, reading helps tremendously. Um, I'm, I'm a person who likes to listen, right? You know, listening is also good or watching videos. So my majority of the time that I'm, so I listen to a lot of things. I listen to government policies, learn new trends. I, I pay attention to that. Mm, I see. If I, I, I do a lot of research online. You know, if I see something, if I hear something, I immediately Google it, research it and find out. And then I go, if I like it, I go further deeper into it. But I'm more of a person who, um, you know, I, I, I cannot, I mean, I don't have enough time to do reading because I can't even be focused in reading that much, but I can listen. I listen to audibles. I listen to a lot of, I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, I listen to Tony Robbins. I listen to Grant Cardone. I plug in, I fuel, fuel myself, I recharge. Um, you know, their, their techniques are proven and best and they have learned and they have mastered it. Um, I do listen to, you know, uh, a very dear friend of mine, um, Dave Medzer, he's a great guy, and, and that's a great uh, resource for me also. And Deepak Chopra, obviously, I get a lot of, I listen to him like, um, you know, I, in pandemic, like last year, I used to listen to him every single Yeah, month. he's very good. It's so amazing. He's very good. Those are the things I do, you know, I mean, I'm not a big reader of books or anything like that, but I'll tell you, um, you know, if you are, if you want to read books and get some inspiration from there, and you know that's absolutely you know your thing. But you know, Three Feet from Gold by Greg Reed is great. My dear friend Sharon Lecter, she's amazing. Uh, I think she's a co-writer, um, co-author of uh, um, Rich Dad Poor Dad. That's a right. Book. She is. Yeah. 
So those are the kind of books, you know, those are classics. You read them, you obviously learn a lot. Uh, Chicken Soup for Soul, uh, uh, Mark Richard Hansen, you know, great books. But uh, other than that, you know, look, each one to its own. You have your battles, you have your strategies, you have your, only thing I can tell you is if you're focused on what you're doing, if you believe in your idea, and if you have a mentor that's going to help you, doesn't matter. Your wife could be your mentor. Your husband could be your mentor. Your your lawyer could be your mentor. You know, doesn't matter who it is. You how, do you, how would somebody find a mentor? And how would you? How would somebody uh, find a mastermind? Um, you know, there are many masterminds out there, and there are really good ones too. You know, I mean, Elevate is a mastermind. I'm not going to say come and join. It's not for everybody. It's not a sales funnel. It is a relationship-based business. Um, you come in, you build your relationship with people and money follows, business follows. If they like you, they will refer you to people. Um, masterminds, there are a lot of masterminds out there. And if you're, depending on where you are, you can easily join one. Um, but it, it's also something that you have to be committed to, right? You got to commit yourself to it. So um, some of the good ones are, you know, you know, that I know our secret knock is a great one. Um, you know, there is Vistage, but you know, Vistage, I don't know if it's a too much of a mastermind or not, but there are some good ones, you know. Um, and then finding a mentor, that's a very important thing. It doesn't just happen. You have it's like one of those things, you know, that it's gotta click. You gotta listen to people, you gotta listen and understand what they're saying. And if that ideology is something that you follow and you like and you resonate with, that's when you decide that this person and then that mentor has to be ready to give you mentorship, right? So it's both ways, but you can find. If you want to, you can find it. I see, okay. Well, thank you for that. I really appreciate your taking the time to be interviewed. You know, I think you're an amazing person and I wish you a very, very prosperous new year. Thank you, Kila. You're an incredible, incredible human being. And I always enjoy your company. You're very straight from the heart, uh, very kind. And I love you, you. Um, for you and your daughter, both you guys are amazing. And I hope I've, you know, I've, sometimes I get a little emotional in what I say, but that's who I am. If you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you like it is. I don't have filter. And I don't think it through or I don't say, oh, what's somebody going to think? But I will tell you what I feel. And that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Me. you. Well, the thing I like about you is that you're very authentic. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Well. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. See you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye.